Algebra 1, Unit 6, Lesson 6, Quadratic Applications. In this lesson, we want to solve systems of equations that involve quadratic functions before we only looked at linear functions, and then we want to use that for real-world applications. So when you have a quadratic and a linear, just by looking at these things, we can see that it might intersect in two points, one point, or it might never touch it at all. So a system of a linear and a quadratic equation can have either 0, 1, or 2 solutions. Solve the system of equations graphically and algebraically. The first one is quadratic, and the second one is a linear function. Since we're given a grid, we know that we're being asked to solve it by hand. The quadratic function, it's in vertex form, so the vertex is minus 1, minus 4. A is 1, so we first graph minus 1, minus 4, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 2, up 3 squared, which is 9. We do that on both sides. We graph those points. And then the line has a y-intercept of minus 2. The slope is 2, so we're going over 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2. Or from the minus 2, we're going left 1, down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1, down 2. We connect all those. When we do that, we see that there were two points that were in common. They were at minus 1 and 1. The x of minus 1 had a y of minus 4, and the x of 1 had a y of 0. So those are our two solutions. Or if we solve it algebraically, we know we can use substitution. Since this is y, we can take this and substitute into the other equation. Then we would use expand this using FOIL, square the first one, multiply them and double that, square the last one, combine those together. We need to take everything on one side because we have a quadratic. I would subtract 2x from both sides and add 2 to both sides. If I simplify that and combine all of those numbers together, I get x squared minus 1 equals 0. Now I see there's no middle term, so I would take that one back to the other side, take the square root of both sides, and I get x is plus or minus 1. When I get y is 1, I can go back and substitute in either equation, and I would find that if I put 1 in here, I get 0. If I put minus 1, I get minus 4, giving me 1, 0, or minus 1, minus 4, the same points that we got graphically. Some applications of this are projectile motion. It's one of the most common applications for a quadratic function. So if it, the thing you're throwing or dropping starts from a height of S0, and it begins moving with a velocity of v0, and then basically it's left to go because you're, you're not holding it anymore, it's just being pulled by gravity, then the equation that determines how high it's going to be is 1 half gt squared plus v0t plus s0. If we're doing it in feet, then gravity is about minus 32 feet per second squared, or if we're doing it in meters, minus 9.8. So if we substitute minus 32 there, we'll get minus 16. If we substitute minus 9.8, we get minus 4.9. So if we're using, we'll be using one of these two equations, the first one if we're doing it in feet, the second one if we're doing it in meters. I'll note that if you drop something, its initial velocity is zero. The maximum height, because it's a parabola, because it's a quadratic, will occur at the vertex. So the t at which the maximum occurs, the time, is negative b over 2a. And then the height will be what we would get by putting that into our equation. When the object hits the ground, the height is now 0. And you can solve for the times when that happened. If it starts from a height other than zero, there will only be one time because the second one would have to be back before it was actually thrown. So you'll get a negative number and you would ignore that. So it says a soccer player jumps up and heads the ball while it is seven feet above the ground. It bounces up at a velocity of 20 feet per second. How high up does the ball go and how long will it take the ball to hit the ground? So the initial velocity we're told is 20 feet per second, that's V0. It started at 7 feet above the ground, that's S0 is 7. We're working in feet, so we're going to use the one with the minus 16. The height is minus 16, T squared plus V0T plus S0 is this equation. The maximum height, again, is at the vertex, as it is for any parabola. So I'm going to use minus B over 2A and calculate that. So the time when it reaches the maximum height is 5 eighths of a second. When we take that and substitute that in for T and I calculate that, 
I'll get 13.25. So the maximum height is 13.25 feet, achieve 5 eighths of a second after the player hits the ball with his head. We're also asked how long will it take the ball to hit the ground. Again, when it hits the ground, the height is zero. So what you want to find when this is equal to zero, we would use the quadratic formula for that. Negative b is negative 20, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. If you calculate that inside first, you get 848. If you then minus, do minus 20 plus the square root of 848 over minus 32, you get one of these values if you're subtracting. I believe the adding will give you the negative value and the subtracting will give you the positive value. Because it's a negative time, you're going to ignore it. So it will hit the ground 1.535 seconds after it hit the ground. We know it started at 7 feet, so this would be at 7. And if you graph that, it would now go up to the maximum. That occurred when at a height of 5 eighths. The maximum height that it reached, we know, is 13.25, and then it hit the ground. We know that that was at the time 1.535 seconds, so you could use what you know about quadratics to sketch what the function looked like. As another example, it says from the top of a 175.5 foot tall cliff, a rock climber is pulling his pack up the side at a rate of 2 feet per second. If the climber drops a coil of rope from directly above the pack, at what time does the coil of rope hit the pack? Well, we know that the pack is going at a steady rate of 2 feet per second, so that means it's following a linear function. So the height is 2t, it's going up in a linear fashion. The rope, on the other hand, is dropped, so it's going according to gravity. It was dropped, so the initial velocity is zero, and it's from this height. Again, we're working in feet, so it would be the height is minus 16 t squared. The v0 term goes away, and then we have this height. We want to know at what time do they hit. That means they meet, so the heights would have to be the same at that time. We're going to set those equal and put 2t equal there. Because it's a quadratic, we want everything on the same side. I decided to make them positive, so I took both of those over there. And then I calculated the discriminant, the thing underneath the quadratic sign. And then I took negative b plus or minus the square root of that discriminant all over 2 times a, which is 32. Again, calculating two numbers, negative we would ignore. The rope will hit the pack 3.25 seconds after the rope is dropped.